Good day, everyone. Welcome back to Life Sciences Grade 11. My name is Dudu Zilugubega. Today we are continuing with the discussion of human gaseous exchange. We are going to wrap up this topic this week, ne? but today we are on today's lesson. At the end of the lesson, you will know the effects of smoking on gaseous exchange. You will also know mouth-to-mouth -mouth artificial respiration, and you will know effects of altitude on gaseous exchange. Smoking, let's discuss smoking. Remember, we covered a lot of factors yesterday about the respiratory diseases and disorders. So it is very important that we understand also how we can control this and one of the many causes of the respiratory uh, diseases and infections is because of smoking. Smoking and its effects. Tobacco smoking is often referred to as the single most important preventable cause of premature death. So it is the most important preventable cause of premature death. Can you do, you, do you understand what this means? It is preventable. If you could just stop smoking, we could prevent a lot of deaths due to respiratory diseases and disorders. So it is divided into two categories. There's active smoking, whereby someone is actively smoking. They themselves are the ones smoking. And then there is passive smoking whereby you inhale smoke because of proximity to a smoker. So, so if you are sitting in a taxi and someone smokes in a taxi, then you are passively smoking because that smoke they, they release also affects you. If you are sitting in a room and someone is smoking in that room, then you are passively smoking as well. So you understand that a lot of us are smoking even though we are not doing it actively. It's, we don't choose to do it, but because people around us are smoking, then we end up smoking too. That's bad. Smokeless tobacco, which is the chewing tobacco, tobacco pouches, and snuff dipping, is a major cause of oral disease and death from oral cancer. So whilst this one has no smoke, and you might think it's better for you, where the people chew tobacco, there are tobacco pouches, and they, the snake, no snake, right? There's no smoke there. But they, it causes what? An oral disease. And, how, and death, that's bad, could result even in death. From what? From oral cancer. So there are various causes to these things as well. We can't just underlook them. Yeah? A number of diseases, many of them fatal, are associated with smoking. Guys, smoking is a serious, serious issue. And I know a lot of people usually start picking up such habits at high school. So I'm, I'm hoping I'll get across to you during this lesson, so you understand the implications that smoking could have on your health. These include what? Cancer. Cancer is directly associated with smoking. Oftentimes, you can get cancer because you smoke, particularly of the lungs. This is, we're talking about cancer of the lungs, lung cancer. So, what can affect your lungs, can affect the larynx, the oral cavity, the pharynx, the esophagus, the pancreas, civic, kidney, and bladder. So cancer could affect all of those areas and those ones could directly be, the, the cause could directly be linked to smoking. Smoking can also be linked to what coronary artery diseases, can also be related to stroke, chronic bronchitis and emphysema. So all of these can, in various cases, it has been linked to smoking. Smoke contains over 4,000 chemicals over 4,000 chemicals. 43 of them are carcinogenic, meaning carcinogenic means they are cancer promoting. Cancer promoting. It also contains cellular irritants such as ammonia, formaldehyde, and oxides of nitrogen. Carbon monoxide, which binds to hemoglobin and reduces its oxygen carrying capacity is also present. So carbon monoxide is also present in, in, in is one of the chemicals from smoking. It does what? What does carbon monoxide do? It binds to hemoglobin and reduces its oxygen carrying capacity because hemoglobin is supposed to be carrying oxygen. But now because 
because of carbon monoxide, it will bind to this hemoglobin. Now it will reduce the capacity that was available for, for binding oxygen. It's now binding to carbon monoxide. And it's the one now that is transported to various important organs in your body. Then it, it's bad for your health. The major component, however, is nicotine. Nicotine is the major component you find in your cigarettes or in smoke. It has a variety of effects on the sympathetic nervous system in humans. It is highly addictive and produces an increased heart rate, raised blood pressure, and increased discharge of sympathetic nerves in the autonomic nervous system. So that's what it could, it could cause. Blood pressure, increased discharge of the nerves in the autonomic nervous system. It increases the heart rate. And what else? Why does it make it? What makes it so, so bad? It is very addictive. So once you start, it's very difficult to stop, even though you may know and study and understand that it is bad for you. Chances of you stopping aren't so very high because it's addictive. People get addicted to this stuff and it would take them years and years and years before they could actually stop smoking because that's how difficult it can be. But it takes a great of mind power as well to stop smoking. Yeah? So that's a topic for another day, but if you want to stop, you can start now. The effects of smoke on gaseous exchange. Nicotine is the main ingredient, like we've just described here. It's the main ingredient in tobacco products. It is a poisonous, it's poisonous. If you see, because it affects a lot of your organs negatively. It is addictive and it slows down gaseous exchange because it constricts the blood vessels. If it constricts the blood vessels, it means whatever gaseous exchange that's supposed to happen doesn't. The blood that's carrying the oxygen can't move because the blood vessels are constricted. It negatively affects gaseous exchange in your system. Therefore, it affects your respiratory system and it could cause severe effects on you. The heart then has to pump harder. Now you're making, you're having your heart overwork. Your heart is overworking now. That would cause that negatively. And then, Tar in smoke sticks to the lungs. So the tar will stick to the lungs, destroying part of the gaseous exchange surface. So not only is it poisonous in those things, it also, the smoke there will, will stick to the lungs. Imagine now smoke accumulating on the lungs. It destroys part of the, exchange, the gaseous exchange surface. And you need a very large surface area to have effective gaseous exchange. So if it takes on, uh, takes up a lot of the surface area, then it affects your gaseous exchange, greatly so. Over time, smoking causes respiratory diseases. Smokers can also inflict the same health problems onto non-smokers through passive smoking. This is particularly harmful to babies and children whose parents smoke in the house. So you need to take care, you see, it affects other people negatively too. So it doesn't just affect you who is smoking. Even other people who are in close proximity to you, they are affected by the smoke. So it's very important that we, are, we become considerate of each other. If you're not going to take care of your health, at least make sure you don't negatively affect other people's health too, especially babies and children. Yeah, look how gaseous exchange in the lungs is affected by smoking. Look. This is a lung of a smoker. Look at the lungs here, black, black, black. That smoke has accumulated here. Now this lung, look which parts here actually would, if this was a piece of meat, which part would actually be edible here? You see, it's very difficult. So the same way, it's, it's not very, it doesn't work as optimally as it should anymore because a lot of the areas there that are supposed to be functioning in gaseous exchange are bent off. They are killed off, the cells are killed off there. So you only have portions and portions of your lungs functioning. So smoking is basically you saying you really just don't wanna breathe. You, you, you just do not want to breathe, so you will destroy your lungs. There are laws about smoking in South Africa. There are various laws. The reasons stated are why South Africa has anti-smoking laws because of the reasons we just discussed. That's why South Africa has anti-smoking laws. It is illegal to smoke in any enclosed or partly enclosed public space. 
Examples are a taxi bus, restaurant, restaurant, balcony, bar, office, school, or hall. That's why in most of these cases, especially in restaurants and in hotels, you'd find that there'll be a smoking area where only people who smoke, who actually want to expose to the smoke, can go there. Then they can expose each other to the smoke because they want to smoke. And in hotels, there'll be smoking rooms where they'll be reserved for people who want to smoke. So people want to smoke will use those rooms and everyone else will use the clean air rooms, I guess. Then in Texas buses, you, you really just can't. You can't just, even in a restaurant, you can't just choose to smoke in any part of the restaurant or in, in, text, in a taxi. If anyone is smoking in a taxi, including the taxi driver, it is illegal for them to do that, even a bus bar anywhere really it's illegal especially in enclosed public places no one may smoke in a car in which there are children under 12 so even if you are the parent and you are the owner of that car you cannot smoke if you are in an enclosed space with children under 12. no smoking is allowed in a private home that offers child care of or schooling so if you offer child care or schooling in your house Definitely no smoking allowed there, even if the children are not there at the time, because the smoke lingers, the smoke will attach itself to the walls, to the material, everything around the smoke will just be there. So it will always, always have that, that smoke, the, the smoke will always be there. The owner of all these places can be fined up to 50,000 rents for allowing people to smoke. It is so, this is important to note because we live with people who really don't care anything about the rule of law. So what do you do? If someone does that, then please, you are feel free to, to, to report them and they can be arrested and fined. Because if someone is smoking and exposing children, you're indirectly killing them because why? It is also illegal to advertise smoking. That explains why you won't see adverts of smoking going around. It is illegal. They do not allow anyone to advertise smoking. Mouth-to-mouth -mouth artificial respiration. Artific artificial respiration is a technique or way to make air flow in and out of a person's lungs if natural breathing is weak or stops. Artificial respiration can be used, for example, if someone has recently stopped breathing due to drowning, respiratory paralysis, choking, heart failure, or smoke inhalation. You can learn to use it and perhaps save a life by going on a first aid course. You saw that exhaled air still contains quite a lot of oxygen, which is why this technique works. It is an, in an emergency outside of a hospital, mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation is used. So this here explains mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. This is when you are trying to resuscitate someone who is in desperate need of oxygen. So what you do, you give them your oxygen. That's why it's mouth to mouth. And why, why would this work? It's because we've noticed, well, you might ask why, because you're exhaling carbon dioxide, right? But remember the table we did last week, where it showed us that there is still a lot of, carbon, of oxygen released in exhaled air. So it's not only carbon dioxide, it's not cut and dry like that. Even Oxygen is released when you exhale. That is why it would be possible to give someone who is maybe drowning, respiratory paralysis, or is choking, heart failure, or someone who can't breathe at the time, it's able that you can resuscitate them through mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. The procedure, this is the procedure, but it would help. I really believe a lot of schools are doing it these days whereby they have first aid courses for students. Then there are those students who act as <laughs> almost paramedics, sort of, I don't know. But it is a course that you can take. Maybe if you are, you wanna work in, um, you wanna ch mind, child minder. It doesn't even work with children only, everyone really. Some people by the roadsides, they'll have car accidents and are saved by strangers before emergency services arrive because they've taken an, an a first aid course and they know how to resuscitate someone. A lot of stories like that, we've seen them going around. They're able to save lives through those processes. So it would be a very helpful cause. You don't know, you'll never know when you might save a life someday if we were to take up this course. So first aid, consider it. Some schools offer it. If your school offers it, do it, take it. It's, it's great. Ne? 
The procedure is here. The rescuer pushes the victim's chin up and tilts the head back to prevent the tongue blocking the throat. So this is important because you might be thinking you're saving someone, but the tongue could actually be the one that's the blocking the throat from releasing and allowing any air to pass through. Then the rescuer will place their mouth over the victim's mouth and blow hard several times. If the victim does not respond, position of choke is checked and process is repeated for several minutes. So you need to check. You need to also check if there's any blockage. Then for an adult victim, air is blown 12 times a minute. Then for a small child, the rescuer places their mouth covering the mouth and nose and blows more gently and often. So it differs from a child to an adult. So learn these techniques, guys. One day you could really, really save a life. Another method is to blow into the victim's nose with the mouth shut. So this is another way. Remember that one was mouth to mouth? Now you'd be blowing into the victim's nose with the mouth shut. First aid kits have plastic shields with valves to keep a rescuer safe from HIV infections. This is to say, maybe, what if the, 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 that person is bleeding at the time? So they use the, the plastic shields there to, so that you can be able to still blow in some air, but you don't have to be in contact with the blood. And in this day and age, even the respiratory diseases, so it can't just be HIV. I think they mentioned HIV here in cases when someone is bleeding or you have an opening as well in your wound, in your mouth or their mouth. It's a risk either way. But also it could be a risk from respiratory diseases or infections because if someone has TB and you are going to give them mouth to mouth, or even if someone has COVID-19 and you're giving them mouth to mouth, yeah, that could be a risk. But it's important to remember as well that when it's a matter of life and death, honestly, I think you even forget about all of those things. You are just there to save a life and you don't think about other things at the time. But the shield here, you won't always have shields. Maybe the people from emergency services, or if you carry a first aid kit around, then you can be able to, to use this plastic shield. But for the general public who've just taken up first aid, chances are they wouldn't have this plastic shield, but we value human life. Ne? So how is artificial respiration applied? This is showing you there. You tilt the head back to open the airway. You tilt it. You need to open the airway. And make sure that the tongue is not blocking can also pinch the nose and breathe into the mouth for one and a half to two seconds. Then, that was it. Any questions so far about mouth to mouth and smoking? Feel free to ask me. And then the effects of altitude on gaseous exchange then if you have no question. Altitude affects human gaseous exchange. There is more oxygen at sea level than at higher altitudes. And it follows that increase in altitude causes, it follows that increases in altitude causes a decrease in atmospheric pressure, meaning air is, less, is getting less dense. So it's the it's inverse uh, uh, reactions. Yeah? There's more oxygen where at sea level than at higher altitudes. So when you're closer to the ground, there's more oxygen. But in this, as you move up, there's less oxygen as you move at higher altitudes. So what happens? increases in altitude will cause a decrease in atmospheric pressure so the air is getting less dense so effective breathing effective breathing is 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 more difficult at higher altitudes than it is at lower altitudes because why we just mentioned more oxygen is available at sea level because uh, because less oxygen gets to the alveoli and the body tissue because why? There's less oxygen at high altitudes. Therefore, obviously, there'll be less oxygen going to the alveoli and the body tissues. The body reacts by breathing faster and taking deeper breaths. Sports people in any discipline know this, and altitude can seriously affect their performance. So it, it's different from each region. Yeah? High altitudes produce two differing effects on the performance. In short burst events like sprints, so if you're running like 100 meters or 400 meters, those shorter distances, the sprints, long jump and triple jump, because they're short, short, short burst, you require uh, energy, but at very short 
amount of time. Low atmospheric pressure means less resistance from the atmosphere. So the athlete's performance is generally better. Do you understand? When low with low atmospheric pressure, then there is less resistance over there. Then you'd have a better performance. In enduring endurance events like the 5,000 meters, you know, the comrade marathons and all of those, the main effect is the decrease in oxygen which generally reduces the athlete's performance. So here you'd require a lot of oxygen over a lot of time. That is why it wouldn't be so good for you. But over there, short events, even at high altitudes, you can still, your performance uh, improves. Actually, you do well at high altitudes in short events. But for endurance events like marathons, then it would be, it would be more difficult. So here, which, athlete, which athletic events are favored by high altitude? We've just discussed that the high altitude favors the short burst events, like short sprints, your 100 meters, your 400 meters, your high jumps, your, your what is the triple jump, those ones are favored here, as opposed to these ones that are marathons. The body can be trained to deal better with high altitudes and decreased oxygen supply. Altitude training increases speed, strength, and endurance. So you see, you need to train your body. You need to, you, that's why athletes train. You don't just wake up one day and decide, hey, I'm an athlete and I'm going to compete. No, you train and train for several months and even years, and you get better with time. You'd notice athletes who started with this when they were still young, get better and better with time, and they're excelling in these athletic events. Yeah? Athletics, athletes, athletes in Cape Town or Durban, where the sea, sea level, yeah? remember Cape Town or Durban, looking at the sea level, might train for several weeks in Johannesburg. In Johannesburg, there's high altitudes. So you need to train for several weeks if you're going to move up. So it's very important. You need to notice if you're going to be competing in Devon, then you might, it, it might help to, especially or if you reside in Cape Town or Devon, where there's sea level and you want to go compete in Johannesburg, there's different conditions there. In Joburg, there are high altitude. So it's different conditions. Whilst you might excel in Cape Town or Devon, it doesn't mean you will necessarily excel in Johannesburg. Understood? This increases their numbers of red blood cells, which means more oxygen is available to the body. They will then perform better at sea level too. So if you've mastered performing at high level altitudes, then you will perform better still at sea level. You understand? Because there's resistance at high altitudes than there is at sea level. Pochefstroom in Northwest province is well known as a leading center for international and local athletes. Its attitude of 1,400 meters provides a balance between altitude and quality training. So that's why I'm saying you need to be very careful. That's why uh, Poch there, Poch in the Northwest is the leading center of these the training facilities for athletes because it provides that balance between altitude and quality training. Because when you have a training at a place where you are favored by the environment and not necessarily your efforts, then it would affect you should you change the type of environment. So athletes just study these things. They study this and they understand these things. That is it. That was quick. Wow, that was quick. Any questions? That is the topic for today. Do you have any questions? If there's no question, then that's fine. Oh, we'll do a lot of activities this week covering these works. I actually wanted to give you homework. Uh, please stay put. Let me, I wanna upload homework. Please do it guys, you'll do it most. Ne? I'm looking for homework, I'm giving you. We will do it together, we will mark it together in class. I'm just giving it to you so you can look at it, do it, check if you've understood the work. Remember I told you I, I, I consulted the Via Africa book for this, so you can consult it as well. It will help you as you get the answers with three. There is homework activity. I should have given it to you yesterday, actually. 
but it's fine. Go look so that you get more time. Go through that homework. It's sent to everyone. So please download that and we'll, we'll mark it together in class. Nah, so you can not say I caught you off guard. Please download Bootle and the other learner can download it. I used the Snapify app and downloaded the via Africa Grade 11 learner's book. Tomorrow we'll continue with our activities and we'll mark the homework so that we can see where our efforts are going. Nah? You need to check. Feel free to bring me more questions. If you have any questions, bring them to class. If you are scared of asking now, type them. Send me an email. Actually, I told you, I, I, I will put up my email address in the slide so you can be able to send me my email address should you need it. I know Butle has it, so the rest of you. Okay, guys, that is it for me today. Thank you so, so much. See you tomorrow. Bye.